right? Very often I get people saying, hey, why are my results zero? And the answer is it's zero because, you know, it's between a value that's outside the range of your plot uh, and another value that's outside the range of your plot, and both of them round to zero. Be really careful and pay really close attention to the numbers that these represent. Like this is 487 Kelvin. That's, that's hot, right? This is probably not going to work out well uh, if I go ahead and do this uh, steady state. So we're probably going to have to do some more exploration on that once we really know what's going on. A uh, couple things to clean up your view. I'm going to go ahead and hide my computational domain and hide my global coordinate system just to clean up the visuals. And so here we go. I want to know more about what's going on. And the first thing I see is this big, solid red component. It tells me nothing about what's going on inside there. So what I want to do is zoom in on red. If you come over here and you click on your color chart, and you come over here, you hover over the top or the bottom number, you see where it's given me that little uh, uh, triangle, I can drag that up. And if I click OK, it resets the color chart to be between those two numbers. And you can kind of just look at these values. So yellow, kind of an orangish color, is the new sort of lowest temperature in here. If I drag this up to, let's say, yellow, and I click OK, we're now getting a really good understanding of the distribution of heat inside this piece. It's 479 to 487, so I mean, it's, it's a pretty consistent temperature, but if you really needed to know which, which areas were getting the hottest, this is a way I would go about looking at it. Now you can tell that this plot is not showing the full range, one, because it's obviously just boring out here and you know more is going on, but also see this little blue square hanging out below? That means there's more values to be seen than what's displayed currently on this plot. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna come over and say, I want to reset to the global minimum or the plot minimum. In this case, it doesn't really matter. Global and plot minimum are both basically ambient. Uh, so then we get that. All right, so we're back in business. Now I wanna look more at the airflow. And the airflow really doesn't go up to red. It only goes up to about this kind of like medium green color. And so when I do this, we get a little bit more stark contrast between the various different areas. And one thing that looks so cool to me on this is these blue streams of air coming in, right? And if I'm not sure that they're coming in, I can edit the plot and add uh, gradients or, or you know vectors or something like that but it looks like the air is just kind of streaming in from the sides here. And then obviously it's going up. Streaming in from the sides goes up and goes out. Now, another thing I noticed though, look at this. I changed the color chart, which now gives me better recognition and resolution of the electrical components. How many of you had on your bingo card that the hottest component was gonna be this guy right here? I actually thought, no way, the heat's going to go straight up. It's going to go straight up, and this guy is going to be the problem. And that's, like, not a problem at all. And if we continue to explore this, we can start to see exactly what's going on. And that is, these jets of air are, even though it's free convection, they're almost enough to basically keep this guy cool and push all the air to the side. Now, I don't know that I fully understand what's going on with this. I may have to look at the right side cross-section or some of the other plots to really, really understand what's going on. But it's really interesting results here in this plot. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and hide that cut plot because I, I feel like I've got everything I need out of that. 